Coast Euchre's Jeff Weinberger coming at you here with a new tutorial. Today I'd like to talk about Hey Good Lookin'. It's a really easy Hank Williams song. It doesn't have that many chords, so we're not really going to be talking about the chords much. I just want to say one little thing about the chords before we, we begin, though, and that is that uh, on our song sheet we have the chord D, and I myself personally like to replace D whenever I can with the chord D7. So if you feel like D is a tough chord for you and uh, your fingers don't always get there so successfully, don't feel bad. Uh, I sometimes don't like to do D either, and so I will replace it with D7, which is a perfectly fine chord. It sounds good. So D7 being 2020. Two, zero. Refer to your song sheet, you'll see a chord diagram for D on there, but uh, here's D7 for you. Second fret on the top string, the G string, C string is open. And we have second fret on the E string, and your A string is open. That's what I mean by two zero two zero. That's my my talk for uh, the frets, starting from top to bottom. Two zero two zero zero, referring to an open string. Alrighty, so let's get right into the tune. Um, the reason I'm showing you this today, I know we pretty much know this song really well. John sings it great, and uh, the band plays it great. So. And it doesn't have to do with sea shanties, it doesn't have to do with the state of Maine or anything like that. But I think it's a really good opportunity to talk about strumming. Um, I tried to make the strum kind of varied and uh, as exciting as I could, and I threw some different things in there. Let's talk about that. So, on a song like this, you can do a strum as simple as quarter notes, which are one strum, one down strum for every tap of the foot. You could go... perfectly okay. That's a really functional strum. It complements fancier strums. Nothing wrong with that as long as you're in time, as long as you're locking into the groove. Notice I replaced the G at the end of uh, uh, How's About Cooking Something Up with me. I did a G7. I do that. Feel free to experiment with that yourself. If you see a chord on the sheet and you know a slightly fancier version of the chord or a spicier version, try it out. It might work. If it doesn't work, I'll let you know if it sounds bad. I'll say, hey, that, that's not D major 7 there, it's just plain old D, or whatever the case may be. But in this case, I like to do G7. Um, I'm going to put on the metronome for a second so you can hear um, how the strum is working against a steady beat. So here's the, my metronome set at 108 beats a minute, pretty brisk tempo, but I know John Monroe, he likes to do this at, at a brisk tempo, so let's, let's see if this works. So you hear the metronome clicking in the background there. A one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Hey, good looking. brisk tempo, but that is one that we could use as our kind of ultimate goal. That's what we're reaching for. But when you practice it, you may have to click it way down to a more moderate tempo. So let's try. Here I'm at 84 beats a minute. A little more modest. Not so frantic. One, two, one, two, three, four. Hey, looking. Try a 
quarter notes are just single down strum with either your thumb or, or your index finger. And let's see what happens. Or if you use a pick, use a pick. One, two, three, four. is a really, really good thing for you to practice at home. So, practicing with a metronome, as strange as it might be at first, as alien as it might be at first, if you get used to it, you're going to be such a much better musician. You'll really get a much better sense of timing, and you'll uh, lock in a lot better. You'll be able to play with the group more and not feel like you're getting left in the dust and uh, that you're uh, way behind the group or way ahead of the group or you lo lose your place in the music. Metronomes are a wonderful, wonderful thing to practice to. We don't do it nearly as much as we should. All right, let's do a fancier strum. Let us do one down strum followed by a down up. That's gonna give us this. So down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up is a very, very good country sort of strum for this. Kind of a honky tonk feeling country strum. Uh, some people call that the train beat too, especially when you do it fast like Johnny Cash. Get rhythm. When you get the blues, get rhythm. When you get, or I hear that train a coming, rolling round the bend. It's a very train sounding beat. It's like a train chugging along the tracks. So we um, can do just that down and down up. And that's a good simple strum if you practice it slow. You can do that. Even if you're a beginner, you can probably do that with some effort. After you get over the awkwardness of strumming up, a lot of people can strum down, no problem, go with the gravity. But then as soon as they start strumming up, they uh, kind of feel like, oh, I'm not sure I like that. I don't like how that feels. So you have to get used to it. Your fingernail is what hit, if you're using your index finger, your fingernail is what hits on the way down. And the skin of your finger, where the fingerprint is, is what is hitting the strings on the way up so that hitting it with the skin might feel a little awkward you are going to have to develop calluses by the way i know that on your left hand you probably all have calluses already from forming chords possibly from playing notes but you have to form calluses on your right hand fingers too whichever ones you use i use all all five of my right hand fingers so i have a callus on each and every one but uh, you have to at least get a good callus going on your thumb you have to at least get a good callus going on your index finger. Then if you get into finger style ukulele, finger picking, you'll get calluses on your other fingers too. All right, so let's talk about a strum even beyond the level of just down, down, up, down, down, up. I know I'm going over these fast, but um, you can email me questions or leave a comment uh, below, below this video in YouTube if you'd like, and I'll answer any questions if I'm going too fast on these strums. Um, another way, oh, by the way, on uh, Midcoast Uke's website, we have a, a section in the menu called Chord Charts. If you were to click on Chord Charts, you would be brought to a place where you see all the chords. Me and John Elberfeld worked hard at that, getting all the great ukulele chords uh, documented there for you to see. But also, there's a little strum booklet. It's down below the chord diagrams. It's a strum booklet uh, PDF file. And... Um, John and I put that together, and it's all these strums we're talking about pretty much, um, all the common ukulele strums. All right, so the next level is not only to do down, down, up, but to hit the top strings of your ukulele, or even just the top string, just the G string if you prefer, um, and then do a down, up. You can do that in a number of ways. Here's how. You can use your index finger and hit the top string or strings, and then do a down, up on the bottom strings with your index finger. Here it is in the context of the song. Hey, what you got cooking? How's about cooking something up with me? See that? Top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top. That's 
very country to do that. I'm going to do that with the metronome. even one level beyond that, there's this really cool variation of what we just did, and this will be the last strum for today, um, where you pluck the top string, the G string, with your thumb. Just that one string. And then you do a flick with your index finger. You have your index finger curled, and then you extend it like that. You flick like this. Very close to banjo playing. Banjo players call that a flail when you do that. Guitar players call that the Mother Maybell Carter flick, like she did in Wildwood Flower. And then um, once you've done a flick down, you do a flick up, like this. Very down home country sound. Good way to play this song, so let's do it with that strum. another level up. And there's all kinds of other things that I throw in there. You might have noticed I did some triplets and I did this and that. And I don't even think about it, to be honest, uh, when I do that. It's just uh, stuff I throw in just to amuse myself. But that's as high of a level as we need to go today is the pluck, flick, flick. Pluck with the thumb, the top string, and flick with your index finger down and then flick it up. strum. Uh, one last word about this song before we leave, and that is when I go from a C to a C7 chord, I oftentimes do this trick. You might have heard me do it before, but we're wondering what, what is that. Um, I'll show it to all of you. So C down to C7 is a very nice chord change. It's in a lot of country songs. It almost always leads to an F chord, by the way. But in this case, I do C at the 3rd fret, and then I do a C major 7 chord at the 2nd fret, and then I do a C7 chord at the 1st fret, so it sounds like this. It has that kind of descending, falling sound like that. La, 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 da, da, da. Kind of bluesy, it adds like a bluesy twang to this country situation, so instead of just C and C7, I go... C to C7 can be uh, intervened in between with a C major 7, if that's the right word, intervened, interspersed, I don't know, something like that, interconnected. So that's a nice lick for you to practice. C, C major 7, C, 7. So there you have it. All right, Mid-Coast Euchres, there's so much more we can do with this song, but let's keep this one uh, a little bit on the short side, and I will catch you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>